Welcome back. In this teaching video, I'm looking at 5.3 Mutually Exclusive and Independent Events. 5.3 represents Chapter 5, Section 3 of the Pearson A Level Maths Applied Maths Year 1 textbook. Let's have a look at the key facts of this section. When events have no outcomes in common, they are called mutually exclusive. In other words, mutually exclusive events are events that cannot happen at the same time. For mutually exclusive events A, B, we have that the probability of A and B is equal to 0. This is illustrated by the Venn diagram over here. As you can see, there is no overlap between the event A and the event B. For mutually exclusive events A, B, we have that probability A or B is given by probability of A plus probability of B. When one event has no effect on another, we call these events independent. For independent events A, B, we have that probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B. Ladies and gents, this is the test for independent events. Let P represent probability. We know that P is more than or equal to 0, but less than or equal to 1. And we know that the total of probabilities is equal to 1. These are the key facts of 5.3 mutually exclusive and independent events. I'll be implementing these key facts within two exam style questions. Here is exam style question 1. The Venn diagram shows the number of children in a playgroup who like playing with bricks, represented by B, action figures, represented by F, or trains, represented by T. Part A, state with the reason which two types of toy are mutually exclusive. Let's have a look at the solution to Part A. As you can see from the Venn diagram, we can write down that the probability of B and T is equal to zero. There is no overlap between the event B and the event T. Hence, the events B, T are mutually exclusive. This completes part A. Let's move on to part B. Determine whether the events B and F are independent. So we're going to use the test for independent events. Let's start off by calculating probability B. So inside the circle of B, we have 3 and 1. So 3 plus 1 is 4. And if we add up the numbers, we have 3 plus 1 plus 4 plus 6 plus 2 plus 5, which is 21. So the probability of B is equal to 4 out of 21. Now, let's have a look at probability of F. So inside the circle F, we've got a 1, 4 and 6. 1 plus 4 plus 6 is 11 out of 21. Now I want to calculate probability B multiplied by probability F. So we have 4 over 21 multiplied by 11 over 21. So if I put this into my calculator, I get 44 over 441. The probability of B and F, in other words, the probability of the intersection between B and F, will be 1 out of 21. Now what we have here is that 44 over 441 is not equal to 1 over 21. Since probability B and F is not equal to probability B times probability F, this implies that the events B, F are not independent. Ladies and gents, this completes exam style question 1. Moving on to exam style question 2. The Venn diagram shows the probabilities of members of a social club taking part in charitable activities. A represents taking part in an archery competition, R represents taking part in a raffle, F represents taking part in a fun run. The probability that a member takes part in the archery competition or the raffle is 0.6. Part A, find the value of X and the value of Y. Let's have a look at the solution to part A. So the probability that a member takes part in the archery competition or the raffle is 0.6. So if I decode that information, mathematically I can write down probability A or R is equal to 0 
Now, since A and R are mutually exclusive events, they do not have an overlap, this probability is given by probability A plus probability R. Okay, so that has to equal 0 0.6. Now, probability A from the Venn diagram is 0 0.2 plus probability r from the Venn diagram, that is 0 0.25 plus x. So this has to equal 0 0.6. Now I'm going to simplify the equation. I get 0 0.45 plus x is equal to 0 0.6. Hence, x is equal to 0 0.6 take away 0 0.45, which is 0 0.15. That there is the value of x. Now to work out the value of y, we know that the total probabilities is equal to 1. So I can generate a second equation, and that is by adding all the probabilities and setting it equal to 1. Okay, so let's have a look at the solution going forward in order to work out y. So I've got 0 0.2 plus 0 0.25 plus x plus y plus 0 0.1 has to equal 1. So we have x plus y plus 0 0.55 is equal to 1. We know the value of x, which is 0 0.15. I can substitute that into this equation. So I've got 0 0.15 plus y plus 0 0.55 is equal to 1. This reduces to y plus 0 0.7 is equal to 1. So we have y equal to 1 take away 0 0.7, which is 0 0.3. Therefore, the value of y is equal to 0 0.3. This completes part A of exam style question 2. Let's have a look at part B of exam style question 2. Show that the events R and F are not independent. Okay. I'm going to begin by calculating probability of R. Now, the probability of R is 0 0.25 plus x, so that will be 0 0.25 plus 0 0.15, which is 0 0.4. Now I'm going to calculate the probability of f. So the probability of f is x plus y. That would be 0 0.15 plus 0 0.3, which is 0 0.45. The next step is to work out probability of r multiplied by probability of f. Okay, so we have 0 0.4 multiplied by 0 0.45. This gives me 0 0.18. Right, probability of R and F is equal to X, as you can see. That's the overlap between R and F. And X is equal to 0 0.15. So what we see here is that 0 0.18 is not equal to 0 0.15. This implies that probability of R and F is not equal to probability R multiplied by probability F. Hence, the events R, F are not independent as required. This completes exam style question two, and this teaching video 5.3 mutually exclusive and independent events. If you found this teaching video useful, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, turn on your notification bell so that you receive notifications every time I post a new teaching video.